Oh, I just love it whenever I get requests for videos. Makes me feel all special. For the person who requested this video, thank you. I really appreciate it. Now, for the rest of you, why aren't you requesting more videos? Come on, let's make it happen. Welcome all fellow wannabes, welcome to the channel. I am Gabriel Fast, I do claim to be the wannabe critic. Today we are tackling quite a tall task, to be honest. Today I am picking my top five favorite Cranberry songs. Now I'm not gonna lie, it, I, I you know needed to do a little bit of homework because I think there's three or four songs on this list that feel like they just inherently belong. So we're gonna, you know, kind of talk about those and kind of talk about the experiences, maybe experiences that you've had with them. Maybe talk about, you know, how, how it may have benefited you more back in the time it was released or, or something. We'll figure out some way to make it pertain to you since you're watching this video. And uh, I'm excited because this is a challenge for sure because this is definitely not my wheelhouse of bands. So there you have it. So getting right into it, let's start with number five. Number five comes in at a little song called Salvation off of an album called To The Faithful Departed. Salvation has quite a bit of a chugging, moving along rhythm. It's not, it's not really a very long song. It's a pretty fast paced song, but it has themes in it that lend the idea that more like pop punk and just punk music in general of what we see today, post hardcore, things like that. It makes me think that maybe someone like Haley Williams from Paramore might have heard this song as a kid and been like, yeah, I, I feel that. That's another thing about the Cranberries. Musically, and, and I mentioned I'm gonna mention this a few I'm gonna mention this a few times. Musically, the Cranberries are just a, an incredibly sound band overall. It's no wonder that they were so popular back in the day, just based on the merit of their talent alone. It's pretty impressive to me. Not to mention the positive themes found within Salvation. The the music fits the mood. Kids don't do drugs. That's pretty simple. I just think it's a well-executed song overall, and I don't think this song really gets enough attention, to be honest with you. Now, these next four are going to be kind of no-brainers, but I just feel like, you know, it's it has to go on the list because it just does. The next song on this list at, coming in at number four is Ode to My Family. If you read the lyrics of this song, it's actually pretty sad, but the experience being presented here is, is so profound and is, is so real that it almost makes you feel like th this there's no way that this song could could be about anybody else it has to be about her the way it's presented the way everything is put together had to have been a the, the type of song that you would sit in your room as as a young person and listen to and just be like yeah like man things kind of suck right now and maybe if you found yourself in a sim similar situation as to what she found herself in back in the day then, you know, you would have resonated with it even more. It's very emo, very much a sad experience of what was going on in, in that person's life during that time. I'm insecure about myself in this particular point in my, in my life, and also the way I'm being treated it doesn't help with that, and it just begs the question, does anyone care? As it's said multiple times in the song. It's a great song, very sad. Coming in at number three is another song off of the record, No Need to Argue, and it's a little song called Zombie. Seems like Zombie has been picking up quite a bit more traction more recently because of the Bad Wolves rendition, which is nowhere near as good. Don't tell me that it's better, it's not. Nothing will ever beat the, just the simplicity of this song and just kind of the overall tightness of the song in general. Musically, it's sound, it's catchy, it gets stuck in your head. It sticks, it gets stuck in my head, you know, all the time, and I don't even listen to the Cranberries often. That just goes to show you, like, how good of a song musically it can be, or at least just how good of a pop song it can be whenever it can get stuck in your head that way. The themes expressed, the serious themes expressed, you know, making a point to get this song stuck in your head to think about the th the themes and the things that are being said in the song just kind of goes to show the lyricism is on another level and the music was on another level. You can't listen to this song and not, you know, nod your head to the rhythm. I just don't think it's possible. Is it possible? I don't think so. And it's catchy. Like, it, all these songs are just very catchy. I think that the Cranberries definitely had a very good way about doing their songs because... You think about that time period, you had like a time period where if you had a solid album out, then, you know, you were relevant for quite some time. The Cranberries had like three albums out that were relevant for quite some time. I was raised in a household where Cranberries got put on every once in a while, even whenever I was, you know, nine or ten years old. But not the music coming out at that point in time, it was music from back in the day. Not to mention, whenever I hear these songs, especially, you know, like 
Zombie and even the rest of the songs on this list, it's like I can kind of get glimpse of my childhood and like place myself in specific areas based on how the music makes me feel because there's a, a, a nostalgic way about it. There's no getting around that this, this band was very popular and I do think that Zombie was just another song that came out that, that continued to push, to push the Cranberries into popularity. Geez, I didn't know this was going to turn into a history lesson. Sorry. The next two songs on this list come off of a little album you might have heard called Everybody Else Is Doing It, So Why Can't We? Naturally, Linger goes on to be number two on this list. I just think there's no getting around just kind of the the legendary status that this song has. It is just a, a feeling like a fool for the person that you love and how... You know, how, how how do you even explain that? If there was an explanation of how crushing on somebody or feeling like an idiot for somebody based on the way they treat you or, you know, like maybe being in a toxic relationship in some ways, a bad breakup, just any feeling of, of losing something that you love, so, you know, love that was lost, Linger has to be at the top of, of those list of songs. It is legendary for being a sad love song, a sad breakup song. The song is a testament to the fact that if you don't love somebody, you can't get your feelings hurt. Whenever she sings that she's in so deep and she's such a fool for you, you know exactly how she's feeling only if you've been through it. And if you're listening to it and haven't been through it, you still can somehow connect with what she's trying to say in this song. It's just a beautiful song. I love it. I think the next song on this list goes without question. Number one, the best Cranberry song of all time. If there was a song that I said, hey, you have to listen to this song, it's got to be Dreams. I use this expression all the time of certain bands have songs, records, compilations, you know, they're part of projects to where they perfectly take lightning and put it in a bottle and that lightning is what it feels like to be young. And I feel like Dreams just does thematically and musically so well what what I just said. It is a a wide range of, you know, kind of like melancholy as well as happiness as well as just aspiration and just does such a good job of making me remember what it feels like to have a dream. Making me feel like I can never let go of that feeling. And immediately can make you imprint yourself into whatever situation you're in whenever you hear that song. It's just an across-the-board good song. And I can't imagine what it would mean, you know, it, it means, it's. It, it, I really like the song. I think it's a great song. And I can't imagine what it would mean to an army of young ladies out there who back in the day would have heard this song and would have been, you know, getting ready and singing to it in the mirror and, you know, doing the thing, you know, that, that we see in the movies, I, I guess, whatever. But you can't deny the fact that that song has a real power to it. And really all the songs on this list have a real power to them. And it just goes to show how legendary the Cranberries are. I mean, it's one of the best bands of all time. Can we agree on that or no? But you, I don't think you can also get around the fact that the, the Cranberries had quite a bit of music out there. And, you know, I don't think that there is, I don't think they have an album where there's not a really well thought out song, whether it be musically or lyrically. And I think you'd be hard pressed to find a song that's just bad overall. So at the end of the day, that's my list for the top five best Cranberry songs ever. The top five, the definitive wannabe critic top five Cranberry songs list. Again, thank you for the request on this video. I want to know what your top five are. I want to know what your top five favorite Cranberry songs are because uh, I'm dying to know. You know, do you like the Cranberries? Have you ever listened to the Cranberries? Do you agree with my list? Like, let me know what your picks are. If you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, stick around at the end of the video. There'll be a playlist. You can see more. I do a lot of stuff here, and uh, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. So with that being said, thanks for stopping by, and thank you for preparing yourselves for a plethora of hot takes and potentially unpopular opinions. I'm Gabriel Fast. I will always be the wannabe critic. Ah!